I'm sorry? Wayne's is skinnier than everyone else's. Does that carry over to real life, buddy? No, I'm pretty fat right now. All right, guys, we're going we're gonna <laughs> to kick this off. About Thanks for joining me. I'm Agna Levy here on this Google Hangout with Team Alpha Male. We're joined by Uriah Faber, TJ Dillashaw, Joseph Benavidez, Coach Dwayne Bang, Bang Ludwig, and soon Chad Mendez, but he's late because he doesn't know how to work technology. So <laughs> we've got a lot of things to get through, guys. Let's start off. Basically, walk us through a day in the life of a member of Team Alpha Male. What are, what are your practice schedules like? How do you guys live day to day? And actually, Coach, if you can start us off, because I know you're in the gym before anybody else, let us know what a typical day is like for you. A typical day for me is just making sure that the whatever I study off of the film for the upcoming fights, I put that into the class, and then we just rehearse the combinations, the techniques, and the drills that I feel that the team needs to uh, prepare for their fights. So I just I game plan a couple nights before, put the class together, create the curriculum for the week, and making sure that I'm touching base in each fighter and each bout that we have. Everybody freeze. And then uh, just put that into drills. Yeah. All right, and TJ, what about you? You've got a fight coming up, so how do you prepare? <clears throat> yeah, camps, I mean, I guess camp doesn't really change because we have so many guys at our gym. Everyone's always getting ready. So uh, we just have, you know, nonstop training. Joseph just fought. He's already back in the gym. So, uh, you know, usually two or three workouts a day, depending on how close I am to the fight. Um, pro practice in the morning, some form of, uh, you know, grappling in the afternoon and strength conditioning after that. Um, just kind of always hitting it hard. And you guys have a, a really stacked team. Obviously, you have five guys in the UFC, but then you have a lot of up-and-comers who are as well in these lighter weight classes. And this is something that we hear about a lot in the UFC. Um, like with Uriah and TJ, you guys are both 135ers. Joseph used to be in that weight class. What's your opinion on fighting each other? Who's up, me? Whoever wants to go for it. Uh, I don't, really, don't want to fight any of my buddies. I do this sport because I enjoy it, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't really find any enjoyment out of that. So, like I said, unless TJ, like, begged me to fight him, like, <laughs> it was, like, a huge opportunity for him, and, uh, and he, like, was, like, begging me to fight him, then I, it w I wouldn't happen. I mean, there's a lot of people out there for me to fight, and, uh, man, I've had a hand in these guys' careers, and they've had a hand in my career, so it's kind of weird, but... You know, if we're all going to make a bunch of money off of it and it's a mutually uh, beneficial thing, we decide it's a good thing to do, that's always an option. I feel the same way. Like, I'm not in that <clears throat> uh, position anymore. But for the longest time, you know, me and Faber were, like, the top two guys in the world uh, at the weight class. So that was, like, the question every single interview. And it was always the same that I don't want to do it. Like, Uriah has done so much for me to start off. Like I said, you know, he's had such a big hand in my career, meaning him basically, like, started the whole thing. It's like he helped me get to that point and now what, I'm going to like try to fight him and do it. You know, we help each other every day and, and get to compete and practice and that's fun but, you know, we're all uh, we're all doing this to, to help each other and, you know, uh, that doesn't necessarily help each other. Not going to be fun, you know, probably be a little awkward and I'm not down with that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be tough. I mean, we, we fight each other every day in the gym. We have UFC fights every single day in, in sparring so uh, it'd be tough. It'd just be if we just like practice, you know, it's our hardest matches are in the gym. Um, I wouldn't want to do it. You know, a little more personal when you're in the cage, getting paid to do it. So uh, unless we absolutely had to, that'd be the only way. All right, and we know you obviously all work really hard in the gym. And coach, you've gotten to know these guys. You know that they have big personalities outside of the gym. Who do you see like as having the most fun when they're not training? The most fun when they're not training. Why don't they hang out with the guys too much outside of the gym? But um, I know that Danny likes to have a lot of fun, likes to pick on people. But uh, <laughs> I think I think we have a good team all the way around. Everyone seems to enjoy their their life, and they live all pretty positive and have a good time. And then, except for you know, Danny's one always making the jokes and being kind of a kind of a kind of a jackass. But he's also but he's also the guy with like the the, the weird smirk on his face all the time, like he just got a parking ticket. So it's just like that, <laughs> he's, hit, he's hit or miss. Where Danny is Danny Castillo? Last call face. He's sick. Actually, Danny was supposed That's to join right. us today, but he is feeling a little bit under the weather. That's right. Should yeah. I bring in Sir Studboy in his place? Yeah, uh, bring in Sir Studboy. <laughs> Maybe not Love yet. Appearance. All right, yeah. He'll, Sir Studboy is the life of the party, but who do you guys think on the team <laughs> is like that? There he is. That's like the Loch Ness Monster or the Bigfoot sighting. <laughs> it's a squad. 
That's who has the most fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what about actual fighters? Uh, well, Lance is the party. That makes a lot of sense. He's pretty fun. Lance Palmer, but I think collectively we all have a, a, a good time together, and the funny thing is you ask, like, who has the most fun outside of the gym? We're in the gym so <laughs> much, and, like, that's fun. Like, we literally have a good time going to work. Like, fighting is such a serious, like, hard thing to do, and when you're doing something, like, that strenuous and grinding, like, it's hard to, to have fun doing it, and, like, we have a blast doing it, so... You know, outside of the gym is whatever. Like, I, I feel most of us do the same thing and kind of relax and, and do what we have to do. You know, we're, we're pretty busy outside of the gym traveling and stuff. You know, inside the gym collectively, I think we all have, like, a really, really good time together. And that's when the best times happen, I think, when we're together. Well, if this is a competition, I'm having the most fun, all right, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Anything, well, anything a competition, TJ's anything making it. To win it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm going to throw a few categories at you guys, and I want you to name who, who you think deserves that award. So, like, we'll start with something easy, like, who's the funniest on the team? And just tell me, rapid fire, who do you think on Team Alpha Male deserves that award? Justin Buckles. Justin Buckles and Dustin, uh, Dustin Akbari on accident. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. I'm going the same. Justin Buckles is probably the funniest, like, Liveliest guy to be around along with Chad. And then Dustin just to laugh at, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same boats. Nice, same boats. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's the best with the ladies? Uh, I would say Uriah by far. He doesn't even have to say anything. He's just like, what's up, doggy? <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. I mean, look at him. Every girl I run well. into, like, cousins – or like any girl I know, like they meet me and then they're like, like my cousin, they're like, oh my god, what's Uriah like? So he's just a heartthrob, I think, of, of MMA in general. Like when girls, when you think about, like when you ask a girl that follows fighting, like, hey, who's your favorite, you know, fighter? Uriah, because he's so cute. So he's one of those guys you look at in MMA as like the heartthrob, like him, GSP, and and probably Pettis for the for the hardcore ladies. How you feel about that? <laughs> The hardcore ladies. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of ladies, man. You know, the Team Alpha Male moniker carries through strong. I got to say, each one of our guys was probably the man in high school. Dwayne, what the fuck happened to you, bud? <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I would say, you know, we're, we, got a, we got a bunch of guys that are good ladies. I think I've just been around longest. Okay, what about... Um, Dwayne, answer this one because you see how their talents kind of come together in the gym. Who's the most athletic? That'd be Chad. Chad Mendez. Chad. Oh, yeah. He's an asshole. He's a freaking. He's, so athletic, he's so athletic, he's an asshole. For the record, yeah. TJ gets pissed off about a lot of things in practice, but one of the things he's always pissed off about is how the <laughs> Chad is. <laughs> I can hear him say almost every day, like, dude, that, that's BS, man. That's BS. <laughs> Chad. He's a gifted dude. I, right. I love Chad, and I don't get mad often, but, like, that's something that gets me mad is just how athletic Chad is. Like, when I'm, like, sometimes going to do, like, a four-day, and then, like, he comes in on Monday, like, fresh from a hunt and just, like, demolishes <laughs> everyone and lifts. It's just, it's just, like, you don't know until you go with him. Like, he's just a different species. It's crazy. Maybe that's why he's not on this chat. Maybe he's busy hunting. Or lifting weights, and we don't even know. He acts like he's resting. He's just, like... Lifting weights all crazy right now. Swampiest man alive. No. Yeah. Well. All right, and finally, who's got the coolest talents outside the octagon? Hmm. Um. We all I don't know if we have any talents outside the octagon. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty good at fighting, so I think that would be enough. All right. We're all good there. Um. <laughs> yeah. Chad's a good hunter. Vapor's obviously good in in his business ventures. I think that's a talent in itself, right? TJ TJ is actually good. TJ is like a man's man. He can like do anything. That's like he true. knows how to fix the internet. He knows how to build stuff. He knows how to like start a boat and, and fix it if he needs to to put to a hitch. He's like he's like Mr. Handy. He can start if you want out. some, yeah. If you if you're in a survival situation and you could pick one person, it'd probably be TJ. <laughs> yeah, TJ would survive. 
Uh, pretty I, I, much I, the man. Fighting's pretty much the manliest thing I do. I don't do anything else manly. I wrote a poem once. Um, <laughs> that was okay. good. That was so. that was like therapy for Joseph after he lost his title fight. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had to like let it all out. He was pretty fucking distraught. That's kind of talented, I guess. So you win yeah. the most artistic award. Sure, I'll take it. What award would you guys give Coach? Picasso, baby. Um, coach, let's see, what would Coach get? <clears throat> coach Coach Dwayne has... The most coach bizarre individual. <laughs> <laughs> Just, kidding. Just kidding, Coach. That's good. <laughs> You're going to get your ass kicked, dude. Most, most OED. Or, oh, what is it? Obsessive. OCD. OCD. There it is. We might Guys have a special visitor joining us. Dude, he's yeah. a. I would, I would give. Oh, I would yeah. give. Whoa! I give Coach the Perfectionist Award. He's like, his, 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 he's artistic in his way too. Like perfectionist, Picasso style, freaking out there. So, right. yep. All right. Master well, let's award. welcome in Chad Mendez right now. Chad. Boom. 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 Chad from, we got a hunting cow. <laughs> did, you just, did you just get back from a hunt or what, dude? Oh no! Well, we've got. Some hey, audio. push that um that the mic button in the top right corner. Boo! You're too Boom. strong. We hate you. Can we hear you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Boo ya! Well, I, I just got you? that frame from Michaels. The what? Oh, the one that in the background. Frame? I have the same one in my house to put up a poster. I know. I asked you. You're the one that told me to get that. I love you. You're welcome. Love you. Baby, where are you at? Uh, What's that? Exactly. I'm going to step back into this. Um, Chad, they gave you the most athletic award and said you're a jerk for how athletic you are, so I'll give you a chance <laughs> to defend yourself. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's so awesome. I didn't know we were giving out awards. Well, yeah. if you would have joined on time, you would have known. Hey, yeah. sir, what award would you give Coach? <laughs> coach Wade crazy, bas crazy Bastard Award. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Coach. I love you. What about the Coach of the Year Award? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we forget yeah. that one? Duh. Oh, I'm a yeah, nice. That was a trick question. He's like a, he gets the award for being a true life ninja. Mm, no, Coach of the Year Father. Award was too easy, huh? He gets he gets Father of the Year Award, too. Good yeah, props out there. Got you got all sorts of awards, Wayne. No, I'll take them all. Not done yourself. Well. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, and coach of the year because you guys are undefeated with Coach Bang uh, in your corner. And TJ, you're you're up next. You fight right. in a couple weeks. How are you feeling? And how's it feel to have a, a coach in the gym every day watching tape and really preparing you for a specific opponent? I've never been uh, more confident than I am now. Um, you know, he he he's doing the things that I would do for my own career. He's doing them for me as well. You know, like I, I would sit down and watch tape of my opponent. He's already telling me things that I need to know way way in advance in, in the future. He's he's watching um, me spar every day. You know, he's we're hitting mitts every day. And he's he's picking things apart on me that I can't see myself. You know, um, we we've had a great team before he got here with guys that were helping me out with with what I was doing. But you know, like we said, coaches OC, OCD about his technique and. Uh, I like it, you know. I, I feed off that. I feed off uh, him perfecting what I need to do. Yeah. Do the rest of you all feel the same way? Chad, go. You're new. Oh yeah. It's awesome having Dwayne in here. I mean, uh, you know, for for me, it was just the whole drilling part. I never got any of that stuff in uh, before. You know, and in wrestling, it's like that's basically what we always do. We come in, you know, you you do your warm up, uh, and then you drill for like an hour. All Drillers the tech killers. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's like we didn't have that before, and and Dwayne coming in, you know, the crazy technique that he has, it's it's unreal, like nothing I've ever seen before. And um, you know, having someone that's uh, the leader on the team and and running us through the drills and knowing, you know, for whatever opponent we have coming up, these are the things we're going to drill today. You know, this practice is more geared towards TJ uh, for his opponent. You know, and or next time it's it's Joe for his opponent, and it. It's just awesome having that, that head coach figure and someone that we can all, you know, really look up to and believe in the system that he has. And, uh, you know, for me, it builds my confidence knowing that I put my trust in a guy that is a genius when it comes to the sport and the technique. And when I get the, get in there in the octagon, I got nothing, no regrets. I got nothing to worry about. I know that I'm going to go out there and let it all hang out and get it done. So it's awesome having a guy like Dwayne 
here at you Team You love letting it hang out, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, You're yeah. Right. How, how did you come to the conclusion that you wanted to bring somebody in, and then how did you decide that it was going to be Dwayne? <clears throat> well, our team, like you said, uh, we needed something else. We've had a lot of great coaches throughout the years, and I've been around for a long time, so I've gone through a ton of different coaches from – Dave Marinoble to uh, uh, Joe Urias that I was trained with in a garage to, uh, you know, um, my Russian trainer to my Thai trainer to, to – I've had trainers up and down. Master Tong was an incredible trainer. He brought us all up to a, a certain a certain level, but he started losing motivation. We were having trouble communicating with him about, like, the issues that we were having because he doesn't speak any English. And he had his own issues. We've had pieces, you know, different pieces that we've had to put together, but never someone that was like a total coach. We'd all help each other out. A lot of our of our team members are are super talented. Like Justin Buckles and, and TJ Dillashaw are like two really talented coaches. Like someday they'll be amazing coaches on their own. But we didn't have. It's too difficult to be fighters and and trainers as well. And I've been a huge fan of Dwayne's for a long time. I remember seeing Dwayne. Are you guys all there still? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're here. We got you. Shit. We can hear you. Keep going. Oh, you can? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you guys weren't moving. Oh, so I've been a huge fan of Dwayne. I've been a huge fan of this sport. When I first started fighting in 2003, uh, 2004, I watched Dwayne's fight probably 50 times with Genki Sudo, where he did the... Uh, he did the crane kick at the end of it, you know, and uh, I just remember always being impressed with his technical, his technical stand-up, and then knowing that he was getting better in the in the ground game, and I saw him do takedowns, and I figured he'd be the perfect guy. And when I came calling, he he started going the extra mile before it was even his job, and I really uh, appreciated that. And I could tell he was going to be one of the hard work, hardest working guys in the world. And that's what we are on our team. So he was a perfect fit. Dwayne, what was that phone call like? Was it a surprise to hear somebody on the other line like Uriah say, hey, we want you to, to be the head coach of this very successful team already? <laughs> yeah, you know, it was definitely uh, flattering. I think it was good. Like, you know, we needed each other. They needed a good coach. I needed somebody to uh, to, to work with. So it, it was just perfect timing, man. I don't know if it was meant to be or what, If uh, you know how things how things work out. But, man, this is, this is definitely uh, – uh, I don't know if it's kind of a destiny thing or what, but man, things worked out exactly how they needed to be, and it's a perfect fit right now. And I, I couldn't be any happier, man. It's a world class team. They all they all get better. They all show up. They drill. They take care of each other, and it's it's awesome, man. We're definitely gonna get some world titles, and I'm just I'm just happy to be a part of this this chapter of life right now. It's just amazing. Yeah, definitely. Meant, to be, go ahead. Sorry, DJ. Definitely, definitely meant to be. I mean, uh, us Ninja Turtles need the Master Splinter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's. It's funny, a lot of the guys, because I've been watching the sport for a long time, like, uh, it was it was shocking to me to know, like, TJ had, had heard of Dwayne but didn't really, under, like, know his history, and uh, and some of the guys just, I don't think they really realized until Dwayne got there, and he, he got a weekend, and, uh, and just put us through an amazing workout. I think they knew. Uh-oh. Lost you. That's what he gets for staying at the W. Yeah. Yeah. Bad internet over there at the W. You can't hear me? There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, so you know, it was one of those things where it was it was something that I thought was a good idea, and then Dwayne came in and proved himself right away, and everybody is has an eye for talent on our team. And Dwayne, did you envision yourself as a coach when you uh, you the record for the fastest knockout in history, UFC history? Yeah, I knew I'd be a coach. I mean, it's like I, I've been coaching you guys since I was 19 anyway, and I've been coaching myself since I was 15. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sir Stud Boy. That is Sir Stud Boy. What's up? This is the for party right here. Sir Stud Boy in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, this guy's coaching. Uh, I feel I'm a natural coach. I break things down. I've been coaching myself. Yeah, I'll be back. My trunk's open. Since I was 19, it, it's just natural. And it's fun for me. I enjoy it for sure. Nice. 
And, um, all right, well, you're now the head coach of Team Alpha Male in Sacramento. And in Sacramento, the UFC will be making a trip there. And there's there's uh, Joseph and, and everybody else's friend, Sir Studboy, <laughs> making his appearance in the uh, Team Alpha Male podcast. I love um, that guy. <laughs> but the UFC is coming to Sacramento uh, December 14th for the UFC on Fox. Um, what should people do in Sacramento? Uh, a lot of people might not have visited there, and you'll get a lot of tourists in, a lot of people there for the yeah. fight. So what are your favorite things to do in Sac? Well, I'm going to be running a seminar the day of the fight at Team Alpha Mel, so yeah. perfect timing for a plug. I like that setup. That was good. You're good, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everyone should come do the seminar at Team Alpha Mel, 1705 I Street. It's going to be at it going. I'm going to do it from 9 to 12. So that's All what right. anyone can do. Nothing else. I 100% Nothing. recommend that myself if you're just visiting SAC and you get a chance. Like, you know, I, I've – Worked with a lot of coaches, and Dwayne's like no one else. Like I feel anyone, literally in the sport of MMA, could benefit from you know a session with uh with Coach Bang. Like sure. it's just different stuff. MMA sparring. Like anyone from the top to the bottom in the whole sport. You know Anderson Silva, John Jones. Like you could benefit from doing a session and you know learn something, something amazing. You know it's it's a it's just a whole new level. You know it's like a new generation of MMA striking. Nice, Ben V. Yeah, if you're going to be in Sacramento, you got to join the bank session for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, sweaty bank session. <laughs> and then after that, where should people eat or go out after the bank session? Where should they go in Sacramento? Macoonies. Have Macoonies. a cigarette. What did you say? Gonna, what was that? I'm going to have to jump in on this one since I am the beefcake and known <laughs> for my calorie intake and just food eating disorder. But uh, Makuni is probably the best, and that's on the healthy side. Uh, there's also a nice little uh, place downtown, Crateville and Jack's. It's, oh, yeah, Crateville's uh, good. Some of Team Alpha Mel's, like, you know, uh, hot spots that we always go to. You know, healthy, lots of options. Um, so, Crateville, Makuni is literally some of the best sushi uh, you'll ever have. You know, if you're in SAC, there's some good Thai food mm -hmm. restaurants. And, uh, yeah. That's Yo, what about, about uh, what about the dessert place? What is it, Leather Beef? Oh, Rick's Dessert Diner? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. There's oh, Rick's what? Dessert Diner that has cake and ice cream, and then there's uh, Leather Bees and Gunther's are like our best uh, creameries for ice cream. There's frozen yogurt on every corner. There's a uh, gelato. Uh, cream Bell, Divine Gelato. Pinos. <laughs> oh. Donuts. Oh, my God. The Don't get started. Just is leaving right now to go eat. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> really. um, and Chad and Uriah, you'll actually be fighting on that card. Um, is it nice to fight in your hometown, or do you feel like there's actually more pressure because you have so many friends and family who will attend the event? I think it's for me, way more fun. I mean, it's super easy. I mean, I get to train at my own gym. I guess Everything's easy for you, jerk. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> It's uh, it's just it's, it's relaxing. You sleep in your own bed at night, all the way up to the fight. Um, you know, I can I can eat the same food that I would normally eat um, throughout my camp, and uh, it's, for me, it's uh, there's no added pressure. I, I actually enjoy it more. I've only done it one other time, and it was uh, it was an awesome experience. So I'm looking forward to it. What about you, Uriah? <sighs> yeah, I like you. Uh, I like it also. I mean, I have a huge responsibility. I have a huge responsibility when it comes to doing media and stuff. When it when the the fights in the hometown, and I enjoy some of that, but it can be you know kind of taxing. But I do like being able to you know sleep in my own bed and and you know have you know the convenience of the gym and everything else. And uh, the crowd is just amazing. You know I I feel like I probably get one of the biggest ovations in the in the sport when I fight in my hometown. And you know, there that's pretty priceless. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I want to I want to run through Hoffail and uh, get thrown into that card. You know, you gotta get on we'll, that card. We'll get a quick victory in Brazil and then head back and get put on the Sacramento card. And Danny Castillo is on that card, correct? Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And two weeks before that, Joseph Benavidez, you are fighting for the flyweight world title. It's a yeah. Yeah. against Demetrius Johnson. Um, Coach, I actually want to start with you because you were not. Um, a part of Team Alpha Male when Joseph had that first title fight. So how do you feel like you can impact the outcome of this fight? Well, I'm going to impact it, you know, pretty significantly just because it's just simple details, the things I've been showing the guys since day one since I've been there, and it's just things that we've been doing for nine months and up to his fight. And it's, it's, it's nothing 
super technical. Actually, it's, it's technical aspects, but they're just small little fixes. In, and, and the guys already know what they are, but they're just small little fixes and just ways to close that gap. And that, that's pretty much all I, all I can say. But, I, man, I mean, even without me, I think Benavides was very close to winning that first fight. And I don't think these guys need me to win these fights, but their chances of winning them are, are better with me in the corner, that's for sure, with me training them. Sure, Joe, how do you feel about this rematch? 100%, you know, um, you know, I think, well, this is the first title shot, you know, under the bang era uh, for us so far. You know, I'm happy it's me, and I get to go out there and represent. You know, I'm going to obviously do my best. Um, but I think it's going to make just a huge difference, you know, having uh, Dwayne and, and, and his training and the techniques I've learned, you know, throughout the year on my side now. You know, I think it's going to be a whole different fight. You know, I'm really excited to do it. I think, you know, I have a totally different outlook. And I did, and I learned a lot from that first title fight. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm getting better every day. And like Coach mentioned, you know, uh, even the, the fight that was a split decision was pretty close. And now it's a year later, and I've just improved so much. And mentally, you know, I've, I've improved way more comfortable out there. And I'm um, having fun again. You know, it's just another fight for me. You know, that's how I'm looking at it. You know, the first one was was almost was like life or death to me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't relax, you know, and go out there. You know, now it's fun to me. I'm just looking at like another fight. And like I said, you know, the chances were good, you know, even last time and if I did again. But the fact that I have, uh, you know, <clears throat> coach on my side now and I'm, and I'm getting better, um, you know, I think it's going to be a totally different fight. And I'm pumped. Two weeks later, I get to see my boys in Sacramento. I'll be sitting there fat and happy. And, uh, it's going to be a good year. It's a good year. All right. You all have some really big fights coming up, but like we talked about a little bit earlier, you've also got some great guys who are not yet in the UFC and some great girls on your team. Can you briefly talk about some of the up-and-coming talents? I know there's girls such as Veronica, there's guys like Andre Feely and Anthony Avila. If you just want to talk about some of those young talents, and I'd love to hear from all of you on this one. I'll talk about Chris Holdsworth, who you guys are watching on The Ultimate Fighter right now. Yep. You guys a stud, man. You've got... TJ and Dillashaw, I mean, TJ and, my, and myself, who are, are basically a coin flip on who would win that fight. You've got Chris Holdsworth, who's in that same boat. Lost you. Oh, no, we lost him. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Someone want to pick up on Holdsworth? Well, yeah, so is Holdsworth. I think Holdsworth is one of those guys. He's, he's got excellent jiu-jitsu, and, and again, and just like everyone else on the mm -hmm. team, everyone's getting better each and every day. Every time we drill, and put stuff on that mat. We're, we're getting better each and every day, so... Holdsworth is the guy who's going to be in the UFC for a while. Who's that, that baby? And, and, and he's, a people that, he's one of those guys that not a lot of people know about until the show. So it's kind of a, a rare gem to sit there. But right. he's going to be he's going to be a force for sure in the UFC. Uh, yeah, we yeah. Can yeah, Holdsworth, uh, Holdsworth's yeah. an animal, man. He's, uh, he's 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 tough to deal with in the practice room. I can only imagine uh, you know fighting him too. I mean, he's he's a tough cat. he's a tough cat. And then the list is endless for our team, and we have so many guys on our team that are good. You know, like you said, Andre Feely, he's on a run right now. He's actually moving up to one. He's a 145 pounder. He's moving up to 170. He's just to challenge someone that uh, he believes he can beat that is in the same um, promotion as him. You know, it shows he's he's got balls and he's willing to do what it takes to uh, make it to the next level. And you know, he'll be there shortly. He's on a, a huge win streak, and uh, you know, I'm proud of the kid. He switched his lifestyle around. He's a completely different human being now that he's been training at our gym, and uh, he's making things happen. Yeah, we've got we've got some younger guys, younger guys, kids that have been with us since they were 10, 11 years old, like Joseph Bobo Morales, now 18, 19 years old. We've got Angelo Trevino, who looks like a, a better-looking De La Hoya. He's going to be a 170-pounder <laughs> for us. He's beating up everyone. Start out, we call him Baby Monster, but now he's like a real monster. Awesome. we got... Uh, Solomon Admahar, who who might be on uh, on the America's watch list because he's kind of dangerous on social media, <laughs> his, uh, his uh, Afghani background, but he always um, drops bombs. Yeah, <laughs> but it, we've got we've got these young guys: Vince Murdoch, uh, Dustin Zahorsky. We've got a uh, little Jose Sandoval, Jose Alex, who is one of the best 25 pounders in the world behind Joseph. Um, it goes on and on and on. Lance Palmer is a, a guy that, that nobody wants to go with in the room because he's, he's he's a physical specimen like Chad and beats the crap out of everybody. Justin, uh, Justin Buckles has got a title for showdown. Yeah, Justin Buckles has been running through guys. who He's a, he's a UFC veteran who's really stepped up his game in the last couple of years. I mean, it goes on and on and on. We've got our uh, uh, Paige. I forget her last name. She just joined the team. 
best looking girl in MMA, supposedly. Voted by the people. I think they had uh, Ronda Rousey, number 16. She just joined <laughs> Team Alpha Male. <laughs> uh, Veronica, Veronica Vaughn. Veronica Rothenhauser. She's a... Uh, Rosa. Rosa Vaga. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot, of, a lot of talent coming out of our team. Veronica hits like a man. Oh, yeah. She does hit like a man. Yeah, knocks Cole's out with that right hand. Yeah. And she's bigger than all of us. Oh, yeah. She's way <laughs> bigger than all of us. <laughs> on the team. Nice. Right. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn. Finkel Einhorn. All right. Well, thanks for that, actually, Joseph, because now we're going to move into a completely random bunch of topics. And I want to start with you because I noticed hey. your tweet. It seems like you might be obsessed with Breaking Bad. Quick, talk about the finale. Ooh. Ah! I can't. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. It, it's 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 like consuming my life. Like I can't wait till Sunday uh, for it to happen. Um, I really don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if any. I know TJ watches Breaking Bad. I don't know if anyone listening does. Um, it's insane right now. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's just insane. Yeah, so, Joseph, do you know what's gonna happen on the show or no? No, it's the finale is on Sunday. Just joking. So I don't know what's gonna happen. No, <laughs> nobody knows what's gonna happen. There's all sorts of theories. <laughs> But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if no one out there in the world knows what's going to happen because with that show, if you keep up with it, like, something always happens that you don't expect. And you can never guess, like, when something happens, you just would have never expected it. So I think that's how it's going to go down. I'm just I'm just excited. Okay, so I've never seen the show. Thing. I've watched some of it, but I never kept up with it. But it's good. The stuff that I did watch, I was getting addicted to it. But it's We've amazing. both been hunting, Chad. That's why. Too much. It's on Netflix, guys. Uh, in luck. Um, it is Netflix. Netflix. Have too much money. <laughs> what about Grand Theft Auto? Anybody play uh, GTA? I'm addicted to it right now. I've been playing it like nonstop. <laughs> nice. So when you're not yeah, in the you gym, would. you are playing TV. Um, I'm either at the gym, sleeping, or playing Grand Theft Auto right now because it's been out for like a week. Nice. Okay. And I finally. That's, that's a dork in me. I, I, I like to play some video games here and there. But hey, I, I think all of you guys can be considered dorks because you all find a cage, so that's okay. You're manly enough there. Um, let's go with the Sacramento Kings. They almost left Sacramento. Are you happy they're still in town? Oh, yeah. I think it's huge for our economy. I mean, that would have set Sacramento back like 25 years had we <laughs> lost that professional team, so yeah. I'm pumped. Staying. Now they're going to build a new arena in three years. A uh, billion dollars going into Sacramento. It's going to be great for all of our houses. <laughs> yeah. You're like a true businessman. <laughs> nice. All right, we Always have thinking. a ton of fan questions from Twitter, Facebook, and actually questions that are coming in live right now through this Google chat. So let's try to get through them. Um, I've got pages and pages of them. So if you want to give some brief answers, but I, I some of these are really fun questions. Um, Joseph, this first one's actually for you. Um, and I apologize to everybody whose name I will butcher. Um, this is from Marcus Crispy. He wants to know, what does it take to be a quadzillion? <laughs> uh, just big quads, you know, and small shorts. That's, nice <laughs> that's pretty much all it takes, you know, some, uh, some giant legs and some small shorts, some squats, some, some, uh, some beef, some protein, and uh, quadzillion. <laughs> there we go. Oh. All right. Um, Coach, this one's for you uh, from Not Matt Dobbs. He wants to know, is there any chance of changing the team name to Team Alpha Bang? Uh, that's kind of weird. I like I like Bang Zillions. I like that one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's not, it's not my call. It's not my call. I'll change the name. All right. Um, this one is from Tom Boker, too. He wants to know, what are your emotions in the changing room before a fight? Um, a lot of guys... You know, obviously fans only see the walkout uh, where you have your music and you're really filling the crowd. But what's it like right before you walk out and you're getting ready in those dressing rooms? I can say, I can, what the fuck am I doing this for? <laughs> <laughs> Usually we have all our buddies there, so it's actually pretty cool. I mean, yeah. you know, I got, I got, you know, some some of my guys I hang out with every single day in my corner. So we're joking around in the back. I mean, my last fight there was three of us on the card, so there's nine of us back there in the room all hanging out before our fight. So it wasn't wasn't too oh, much sure. pressure. It was real nice. Yeah, it's something. Uh, like I, I've talked with other fighters before that have. Uh, kind of been in this, the same dressing room, just kind of hung out in the same area while we're getting ready to fight, and it's, they're like, 
what? How do you guys stay so calm, and how do you have so much like positive energy all the time? You know we're gonna beat you up, son. Yeah, yeah, it's soft, dude. Dude. <laughs> yeah you know, it's like. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, you got all your buddies and you're about to go fight the rival gang across the, you yeah. know, the school and you know you're going to beat the... It's a good feeling. <laughs> Another day at the office. Another yep. day at the office. Nice. Um, all right, this this is kind of a unique question uh, from Nobby121. Uh, has the team ever considered scouting Jamaican fighters? It's yeah, Dwayne's been all over that. Dwayne was just saying we need to we need to scout some Jamaican fighters, but uh, uh, we haven't really made any steps in that direction yet. Challenge uh, just in our challenge well, just in our uh, that's, a, that's just a, that's just an interesting. There's really no barriers when it comes to martial arts, especially mixed martial arts. So it's not really scouting Jamaica. Is this a serious question though? Like, what the hell? Yeah, it's like a, I, I, I think like it is. Like the thirties or something. Like, <laughs> but, but no, no. This it, is the I next cool thought, runnings. Per, Race no, we haven't. Just go. <laughs> okay, uh, fair enough. Um, all right, we know everybody's in shape. Uh, this is from Colorado MMA fan. He wants to know hey. when, when you are cheating on your diet, what's your favorite cheat food? Mm. My I like favorite. vanilla ice cream and French fries. Well, that's okay. Combo okay. together. <clears throat> that is good. I go in and out burger. Yeah. My life is pretty much a cheat meal, though. <laughs> <laughs> Cereal, pizza, ice cream, in and out. Like I said, my life is a cheat meal. So. Yeah, but you're not eating that during camp. That's like right after, huh? No, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I eat some French fries and a little ice cream during camp. I just eat less of everything. Yeah. yeah. I think a big double double from In and Out, animal style, or just grilled onions and probably two fries because I can always. Just destroy one. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> I like pizza. Gotta go with pizza for sure. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Now I feel like I need to leave and go eat. Um, okay, this one is a little more serious. It's from CMAC823. He wants to know when or if Cruz gets better, what do you think his chances are in beating Burrell? Uh Uriah, if you want to start us off on this one. I think he's got a good chance. I don't, I don't think people understand, you know, being a champion is in the mind. It's not in your knee. It's not, uh, you know, anywhere else. And, and Dominic has proved over time that he's got the championship mentality. And uh, I know, you know, I've been in situations where I've hurt my hands during fights and had my leg battered in and broken ribs. And you keep on fighting and find new ways to do damage. So um, I think he'll find a way to adjust and be a threat. That doesn't mean I think he's going to win, but you know. That's because he's fighting another guy with the same mentality. He's a champion himself. Burrell has got that as well. But I don't think it's because of the injuries. I think it's because you're fighting against two guys that are very, very tough that makes it a crapshoot. All right. And, so and it's like 50-50. Well, on the topic of Dominic Cruz, you know, there's been a lot of talk about him um, and he is still the bantamweight champion, but a lot of people are saying, you know, it's been almost two years. He should be stripped of that belt. What do you guys think, personal feelings aside, about a champion who can't compete for that long? Should he still retain that title? I think it'd be better for him to get that title stripped from him because he's gonna come back after a two-year layoff and have to fight the best guy in our weight class. You know, I mean, I feel like he should, for his own, uh, to help him out, to fight someone as a warm-up fight before he has to fight Burrell. You know, it's going to be tough for him to come back and have the toughest fight, you know. After yeah, I actually talked up. to Cruz about that a little bit, and I was saying the same thing TJ just said, and he's like, yeah, but he's like, I don't want to do that. He's like, I, I, I know, he's like, you know how we are, we just have confidence knowing that, like, I can put in the work, come back and do it. So I don't think he wants to do it at all, but uh, I don't think it's, really it's, it's a hard situation because yeah. at this point there's guys that he hasn't fought yet that – would have been title fights for him, like a guy like Michael McDonald, uh, a guy like uh, the guy that I just fought, Yuri Alcantara. Um, that guy's got a got an amazing record and a great repertoire. I think TJ Dillashaw is an amazing matchup for Dominic Cruz. If he were to fight TJ right now, I feel like Dominic would, would lose to TJ. You know, myself, I feel like I could beat him. So it, it doesn't make sense for him to want to go fight some of these other guys. He would have fought for a title anyways. Because there's a pay scale involved, you know. There's there's things that he loses. So I say let him keep the title. He's earned that position. 
if he gets his butt kicked when he comes in and fights for the belt, then, then so be it. But, you know, I don't ever want to see a guy that's a champion fight guys that are lesser than him. Now, the problem is, and what he's thinking is, all these guys are tough. You think I'm an easier fight than Burrell for Cruz? It just comes up to matchups. You think TJ's an easier fight for Cruz? It's just going to come up to a matchup. Alcantara, uh, you know, Michael McDonald, it's all going to come down to a matchup. So it's, he's got a lot to lose by getting stripped by that that belt, and I wouldn't like to see that even though I don't like him. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, on the topic of champions, we saw John Jones just uh, defeat Alexander Gustafsson this past Saturday. Uh, how did you guys score that fight? That's from Jake Mango 27 on Twitter. I seen Gustafsson fight John Jones, but I also seen Gustafsson beat John Jones. I thought he won three rounds to two. But um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty close fight. But I scored it three rounds to two, and uh, Alex Gustafsson should have won. I had it for John Jones, three rounds to two. Um, you know, he's a champion. I think he went out there, and I think he won. Four and five, definitely, and then, you know, uh, two or three were toss-ups, but he got one of those for sure, too. <clears throat> Dustin did a, did a great job, but, uh, you know, I still give it to John Jones, and I think it was a, it was great to, ha to see him in a fight like that because he's looked yeah. so flawless, you know, before that, so it was good to, to, to see him go to battle. I think he gained some fans out of it, and Gustafson elevated himself, too. There was a win and a, there were a winner and a loser, but both of them elevated themselves in the fight. So Yeah, they were brought up at any point. They're so young, they're going to be doing that for the next few years. I don't think anybody else is going to give Jones that tough of a fight right now. Uh, I, so. think there's a, I think there's a couple guys that will. I think Glover Texera will, and I think uh, Phil Davis will as well. I, I think I, – I thought that uh, Gustafsson by with the first three rounds. Yeah, really? This helicopter is, like, just hovering right over this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they know it's you're doing the chat they want to be on. Yeah. The old dirty bird. <laughs> the old dirty bird helicopter. Well, anyways, I thought that Jones showed a lot of heart, and I give a lot. If, if I were judging it from the way I would like to judge fights, I think Jones won. But by judging it by the way you're supposed to judge fights, I think Gustafsson won. Gustafsson won three rounds, but Jones won the latter two rounds and did more damage at the end of the fight, which, you know, I, I like to think of fights and fights to the death. To the death. Where you going, TJ? <laughs> Sit down. Going to the bathroom. It was oh, TJ's going to go take Whoa. a dump outside. <laughs> it's it too hot inside. <laughs> we, have a, we have kind of a unique question here. Um, it's from the same guy who just asked that last one. He wants to know who would survive the longest if zombies attacked. I will front kick the hell out of some zombies. Me and TJ. <laughs> Me and Chad are sticking together, son. It's kind of crazy because we already said it earlier that TJ's, TJ's pretty good in survival situations. You know? Uh, I'm going to, Chad I'm going to too. Chad's mansion. We're holding that shit down. They're better with guns for me, so I like to think, well, I'll just survive or I'll survive as long as them because I would just go and where they are and hide behind them. <laughs> so I would like to think I would just survive as long as they would. Cause, In all you know, actuality, I'd though. I'd just be like, Chad, TJ, help me. <laughs> what is a zombie going to do? They like they come at you like slow motion. Like, Get socked up. Oh, shoot. Oh, here comes a <laughs> zombie. Let me walk around cool. them. We oh, all know yeah. TJ would survive the most in that situation, period. <laughs> you know, I have so much fun. You're right. You kind of look like a zombie right now. You're very dark. Yeah, the helicopter wouldn't leave, so I had to move. Hold on a second. LA. <laughs> uh, let's go to another question. Right. So we have some Facebook questions here. Um, let's start with this one from Ray Lewis, hopefully not from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, this is for Dwayne. He wants to know, how much has MMA changed you since you first started, and how tough is Boss as a trainer? Bob, well, let's talk about Boss first. Boss is a very tough trainer. He's one of the main guys who taught me how to train as far as – I feel I have the the, wet, the wrestling work ethic but for striking. <laughs> and um, Boss is definitely a tough trainer for sure. Just how the Dutch – the way the Dutch do their, their kickboxing drills is how Americans do their wrestling drills. It's just hard nose just to get after it. And then uh, what was the other question though? Sorry, what was the other question? What was the first question he asked? Um, how much has MMA ch oh. uh, changed you since you started You know, as how, a kid? Uh, how has MMA changed me? I'm not quite sure how much it's changed me. It's definitely let me know who I am. I've definitely faced a bunch of adversity, and I definitely know right now who the heck Dwayne Ludwig is, that's for sure. But I don't know how much it's changed me as much as, it, as it's just opened up my eyes to the real-life situations of life. All right. That's All right, guys. Me. 
We're getting a ton of questions about um, your healthy lifestyle. Even though you all like to indulge in your certain treats, you all live a, a pretty healthy lifestyle. Um, when it comes to not only training, how you eat, and just how you carry yourselves outside the octagon. Um, so if you guys could just maybe touch on that about why you choose to live your lives the way you do and, and how you feel it benefits your training. Dolce diet. <laughs> Dolce diet. You're good at those plugs. Hey, Honestly, though, for me, it's just, uh, I mean, I, I just want to live a long life. I want to be able to, uh, you know, have a family live and, and enjoy it. And, you know, eating crappy all the time and doing things that aren't healthy, you know, that's not, it's not going to work. But um, more importantly, I want to feel good. I want to be able to feel at my peak, be as, as have the best cardio, the best shape, the, and feel as be the best that I can when I'm fighting. So, um, you know, living that healthy lifestyle, uh, that's important for that. But don't get me wrong, like, I'll go out after a fight, I'll have some beers, uh, have a good time, and uh, have some cheap food and stuff. So, I mean, it's, you got to have that. You can't, you can't not have that in your life. You'll go crazy, uh, especially if you're trying to diet or cut weight, you know, like we do. And um, I think it's, it's normal and it's healthy to kind of do that every once in a while. But um, for the most part, overall, it's, it's, just kind of the lifestyle that we choose to live probably, or at least for me, is I want to live live long and I want to uh, be able to fight good. Yeah. yeah Chad, Chad also burns 2,000 calories a day laughing, so you I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean Happy not all not the only, time. Not only the food aspect, but what about, you know, getting up on days you might not necessarily want to be training and, and making sure you're in the gym and also making sure you're resting adequately. How do you um, keep each other in check and, and how do you maintain that lifestyle? We have to keep each other in check by not working out too much almost, you know. We're so addicted to winning and wanting to be the best that if you're in the gym too much, it's more of a hinder to your health and uh, how good you're going to do in the sport than it is to actually take some time off. Um you know, I think that's the that's the key to being uh, successful and healthy is, you know, if you want to be the best, you're going to eat right, you're going to train right, you're going to be in the gym all the time. Yeah, it makes 100% sense, you know, like we're using our bodies, you know, we're trying to have them at peak condition, you know, uh, you know that's going to come with food and, and exercise, you know. So, you know, training for me is, you know, I would be working out anyway, you know, if I wasn't, like after a fight when I do eat pretty bad, you know, I'll sit there for two weeks and be like, I don't know how people do this, so I'll just go work out because it's what I like to do, you know, and thankfully it's our job, so, you know, we get to stay pretty healthy, the, the fact that our job is working out every day, and, uh, and you know, to be able to compete and, at our peak and that, you know, the food comes and uh, uh, the healthy food comes and, and, you know, that helps out a ton. You know, I'm not as good as everyone else in the healthy lifestyle, but I think I'm coming around, like I used to binge for like three weeks straight, now it kind of goes down to a week, and like, once I start eating good, like, I feel good and I, and I can keep going at that, you know. Like, it's like just once I start, it's like, wow, this is obviously that I feel better. I see why everyone else wants to eat these kale shakes and bird seed and hemp stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I do it. Like, it's no secret. Like, you just, you just feel uh, a little better. So, uh, yeah. Favor is right, probably yeah. the craziest health nut, but. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I was just raised like that, so that's what I'm used to. I just crave healthy foods, but I, I don't, I'm not like real strict. I'll have a little bit of candy on occasion. I mean, that not is sweet. much. I don't really like red meat. <laughs> I was just raised in a family that that was uh, really adamant about good health. They hated the internet too. <laughs> What the problem is, man? Uh, but can you, you hear all me? seem, yeah, yeah. we can. Right now. <laughs> you all seem to be on the same page. Um, when it also comes to life outside the octagon, uh, you all seem to have a great time, but uh, know your limits and know when you're in camp, what uh, things you can do and can't do. Is that something that kind of brings you all together and makes you even get along better because you live the same sort of lifestyle outside of of the gym and outside of the octagon? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just it's just motivating and, and, and helpful to have a bunch of guys uh you know with the same mindset and goals uh in mind. So it's it makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. Yeah, I feel like you know, it's been a it's been a something that I've I've thought was really important from the beginning is to surround yourself with like minded people and we're all moving towards bigger th things. And this this team 
I mean, everyone talks about how we get along. There's always qualms, you know. It's like a family. Like a family is never perfect, but we all understand <laughs> the individuals. And, uh, you know, there's ups and downs and everything else, but we always have each other's back. And, you know, we may get on each other's nerves sometimes. There might be a tiff here and there, but for the for the bigger picture, we all are level-headed and, and moving in the right direction. So it's pretty cool, man. We have a great group of guys, and we attract great – Great, uh, similar energy. And if there's techno music playing, we all go crazy. It's <laughs> 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 so I've been around to a, a bunch of camps and a bunch of gyms. <laughs> I've been around to a bunch of camps and a bunch of gyms. I can definitely say that the group of guys here are definitely closer together than any other camp I've ever been at. That's for sure. There's definitely great chemistry at this camp, which I think needs to get more credit for everybody's success. Everyone's kind of pointing to me, but nobody would be at this camp if it wasn't for your IFA. So there's a couple there's a couple key elements to the, the the success rate of this team. Right, and obviously you're successful, but you've got a ton of fans. I'm sitting here reading these Q&A comments right now, and almost every question just basically says, when can I hang out with you guys? Um, <laughs> So, We're set, December 14th at my seminar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the application. <laughs> well, why why do you feel like you attract so many fans? Because um, you know, you we do you we do people, have a we do have a program for last year. <laughs> I feel like um the reason like when I first came to the gym, like you know, you, I've always watched Uriah and uh, he was a superstar to me. You know, I really liked the sport and he was like a a big deal. But when I got there, he just treated me like a normal guy on the street, you know, like just, uh, um, you know, meeting a buddy that you've known forever or, you know, he's just a nice guy from the start. And so it's it's easy to like someone that's like that. Yeah, it's, it's – I, I, feel like, I feel like, you know, having no egos on our team is a big deal because a lot of people, for whatever reason, feel like there's a hierarchy out there. I know for a fact that I'm just a regular person just like everyone else. And I feel like that kind of energy spreads, and, and people, I mean, there's no there's no egos at the gym. And if they are, they don't fit in, you know? So that that's the coolest thing is is we are regular dudes. We know that. We work our butts off, and we're realistic about it. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about the whole egos and martial arts. And I think everybody in the world should I have to train martial arts to get punched in the face because you can't have an ego at the gym. You come with an ego, you're going to get beat up, so the ego doesn't last long. And I think that's something that people who have ego or think they're badass, they haven't been punched in the face within the last 24 hours. I I hope that doesn't come into effect because I'm not really trying to get punched in the face. <laughs> oh, cool. You don't have okay. an ego. You're good people. So it's all right. You know, it's well, people who are, like, don't think they're don't think they're pretty bad. You know, that's cool. Take your bad, have that confidence, <laughs> put it you know, push towards positive goals, but come in the gym and uh, you know, get that ego checked. Big idea. Okay, so the answer we'll give all these fans who are asking to hang out will be go to Dwayne's seminar, say hello to Team Alpha Male if you see them. They're friendly guys. Um, and if you have an ego, you're sparring me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. TJ's ready 24 <laughs> 7. Yeah. Um, and whenever somebody comes with an ego, we'll put it with TJ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out, well, before I, I let you guys go, we have one final and very serious question um, from Umar Savage Hyatt. <clears throat> he, he wants Umar, to know, what's up, baby? Why does Dwayne Ludwig not walk around with his shirt off? It's so un-alpha male-like. <laughs> so I have to ask that. obligations and a belly. <laughs> <laughs> and I that's like your really good. Tell him NG. NG. <laughs> NG. We like SG around here. Correct. And yeah, that would stand for? Coach Joyce got to hang out with us to know. Wait, yep. got to hang out to know. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, guys, well, you have been on here for an hour. We appreciate all of your time. I'm sorry to all the fans whose questions we couldn't get to. We had so many pouring in, but I hope you enjoyed the chat. Guys, if you have anything you'd like to say before uh, before you leave, say it now. Thanks for the support, guys. Thank you, guys, everyone that came on. Appreciate it. Couldn't do this without you guys. We love you guys. Uh, can't wait to fight for you guys again. Watch my fight October 9th. Yeah. yeah. December 14th. Oh, yeah. shit. Big Fox. And uh, yeah. you'll all be on the Fox Networks. Look at that. Uh -huh. Perfect. <laughs>
All right. Thanks so much, guys. Your eye just hopped off. We'll say goodbye to the rest of you. Um, thank Namaste. you for everything, and I uh, hope you fans out there enjoyed it. Until next awesome. time. We'll see you later. Thanks, awesome. man. Thanks.